Good evening, explorers, and welcome to the range. Where we're going to be breaking down various weapons, tools, and mechanics of the game sandbox. Today we're looking at the final caliber, 7.62x54R, and the weapons that utilize it. 7.62x54R, the R standing for rimmed, is a very old Russian cartridge dating back to 1891. It was created alongside the Mosin Nagant, which we will get into in just a moment. Unsurprisingly for a cartridge of this age, it has an extensive service record with many nations and being used in many conflicts, even some more recent ones if you catch my drift. Yes, this practically ancient round is still in service to this day in weapons like the aforementioned Mosin, PKM Machine Gun, Dragunov, and Maxim Gun. It has stood the test of time, far outliving the empire that created it, and the one after that. Moving on to the game though, we have a pretty standard selection of ammo to choose from. FMJ is our baseline, dealing 100% damage, having an 85% chance to penetrate armor, and having a cost of 340 for a box of 20 rounds. Copper hollow points, or CHP rounds, deal 70% damage, have a 50% AP chance, and cost 260 for a box of 20 rounds. They also have a 20% velocity penalty to boot. Armor piercing, or AP rounds, boost the penetration chance to 100%, while only dealing 85% damage. They cost 380 for a box of 20 rounds. Overall, I personally prefer FMJ with this one. AP drops your damage just enough to not be able to one-tap some of the more beefy mimics. You could definitely argue an AP's defense here, but FMJ is just my preference. Moving on to the weapons, first up is the Mosin Nagant. As old as the round itself, it was created in 1891 for the Russian Empire. It is a bolt-action, internally mag-fed rifle and is one of the most produced firearms in history having well over 37 million manufactured. Fun fact, but Mosin Nagant isn't actually the rifle's name. It was first called the three-line rifle M1891, a line referring to a tenth of an inch or .1 caliber. Three line equals 30 caliber, which is exactly what 7.62 is, 30 caliber. Originally, the rifle was created by Captain Sergei Mosin, who beat the competing Nagant design. However, due to a legal dispute filed by Nagan over the Interrupter, a part in the gun meant to prevent double feeds, the rifle came to be known in Western press as the Mosin Nagant rifle. Then in 1930, the rifle was improved by Mosin using aspects of Nagant's original design, becoming the M1891-30. This version of the Mosin is the one that people are most familiar with. History aside though, there is another nickname that the Mosin has received. The Garbage Rod. And as a proud owner of one, I'm here to say that moniker is well earned. The trigger pull is horrendous. Operating the bolt feels like, to quote somebody somewhere, dragging a grand piano across a gravel beach. And just, just look at the safety. Nevertheless, I love it all the same. The version we see in game is actually the carbine length variant of the M1891-30. In game it has a weight of 4.5 kilograms, an internal mag size of 5 rounds, bear in mind each round must be individually inserted, and a damage per shot of 140. Bear in mind while this does have a safety, it's not actually modeled, so there's no way to visually see if the gun is ready to fire or not. From 100% to 50% durability, it will take around 200 rounds. The sights are pretty great in my opinion. Very spot on and easy to use. It has a cost of 5500 in the Vano shop. For upgrades, you can get a B-Row for 600, a suppressor adapter for 750, minus 20% recoil for 750, and a B-Row sight for 650. I figure it goes without saying, but don't get the recoil upgrade. If you want one, they can be found in metal crates starting in Pobeta and through Kolkaz and the castle. Stash spoiler incoming. There is a stash here in Kolkaz with a Mosin, just under a bridge. It comes in good condition and it has a built-in B-rail. Overall, this is my favorite weapon in the game. For me, it strikes a perfect balance between fun, effective, and affordable. It has carried me through the zone time and time again, and for that, it's an easy 10 out of 10. The next and final weapon is the Tiger Rifle or SVD-63. Designed in 1963 by Yevgeny Dragunov, it was made to fill a capability gap for ordinary troops, 
giving them a long range precision option. Despite its AK-like appearance, internally it's a departure from typical AK design and uses a short stroke piston system unlike the long stroke seen on most AKs. It also has a two position gas regulator that can be adjusted with the rim of a cartridge. This can help the rifle cycle under certain suboptimal conditions. As it's referred to in game, the Tiger variant of the SVD is just the civilian version, the only difference being the absence of a bayonet lug. These rifles are still being produced to this day. In game it is a weight of 3.9 kilograms, a mag size of 10, and a damage per shot of 140, same as the Mosin. It has a standard style AK safety, which must be disengaged to charge the weapon. From 100 to 50% durability, it will take around 19 mags or 190 shots. The iron sights are pretty good, but I personally recommend the PSO scope for that classic look and long range ease of use. It has a cost of 8,000 in the Bono shop, which is the only way to obtain it. For upgrades, you can get a B-Rail for 600, a suppressor adapter for 750, minus 30% recoil for 850, and a B-Rail sight mount for 750. Overall, this thing is a beast of a rifle. It's pretty much just an upgrade to the Mosin in every single sense besides raw damage per shot. Due to its semi-auto nature, you can get a bit more aggressive with it too, giving it more overall versatility outside of defensive sniping like is often required with the Mosin. Despite all that though, it loses out in the availability department big time, which if you know me and how I play, is a big deal. And for that, I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. To many, this is probably the ideal sniper, serving as a middle ground between the loud and aggressive M14 and the silent but slow DVL-10. All in all, 7.62x54R is a beloved round for me, and is often what I fall back on when I'm in a bind. A dependable, fun, and powerful option while you face whatever the radius has to throw at you. And that finishes out the game's guns, at least until more are added. We are far from done though, there's still plenty of mechanics, equipment, and entities to cover. Until next time, explorers.